Hey guys, Double Wide 6 here, and uh, this is the third part of a video on rebuilding a John Deere L118 transaxle automatic uh, transmission and uh, hydro transmission. And uh, in the first two videos, I showed you how to take this thing apart. And we went through the uh, pump and the motor as far as all these pistons go and we put all that stuff back together because that all checked out well. And uh, I ordered parts from the company that makes this thing. Um, they're called Tough Torque. They have a great website and I ordered parts Monday morning and it's Wednesday night and they're here. Um, these gears are really worn down. These are the ones that I replaced. So you can see that the the teeth should be nice and angular like that and uh, I wasn't sure about these little spider gears up here um, you'll notice that the old ones I'm sure that they would still work but they're they're very rounded over and when you look at the new spider gears you can see that they are quite angular so we got all the parts and the uh, synthetic 5W50 oil and we're ready to install it. I had a broken bolt. The bolt is now replaced. So I guess we're just going to start the reinstallation. Um, there's a clip that goes in the track here. I know that. And then I'm going to slide this guy back and I'm going to put on one of these splined gears. And now I have the differential with with both the uh, spider gears already inserted in it and just so you know I read on the uh, plans where where it's kinda hollowed out a little bit or recessed that side points towards the shorter axle so my shorter axle is on the right hand side and I'm gonna ever so carefully try and get this thing in here I don't know if it's gonna fit like this I just thought it would be a little easier to try and get this in here with the uh, ooh, with the spider gears in place. So that actually fit in there that way. I wasn't sure if it was going to. And now we're going to put uh, this gear on this axle. So we're going to line it up where it needs to be and you just want to be careful when you do this because there's splines there we go and now I'm gonna insert the clip on this side so there's a little C clip that goes in the track there there you go and then there's two clips that go on the outside one here just fits on there like that and there's another one that goes, they look like horseshoes kind of, goes right in here. That one's going to be tight. I thought everything was going too well for a first timer here. So, oop. you know what? This should fit. There it goes. Alright, slipped right in place. So it looks like... Um, we have everything right where it's supposed to be. It's all locked in with those clips. So I'm happy with that and there's no timing marks on these things. So while I'm thinking about it, there's a little magnet here that catches broken particles of ferrous metal. I'm gonna put that in there so I don't forget it. All right, now there's a set of gears. I was very careful to keep this thing placed together and I noticed that there's a flat end on this shaft right here. The flat end points in towards the center. And I believe this thing should just drop in place right here. And there it goes. And that looks like that's lining up nice. So we're looking good there. So here's a look at that set of gears I just put in and that's how I'm leaving the flat side kind of facing up. And the reason I'm doing that is because if you look at the, the top 
of the housing, I can see right here where that flat side rubbed against this casting right there. So that's exactly where it's supposed to be. So my new filter is going to go in place right here. And just so you guys know, if you're going to rebuild these pistons, uh, you want to make sure that you lube them as you go. Um, I basically pulled mine out and inspected them. I didn't wipe the oil off of them. I put them back in. I'm going to take some oil and I'm going to add it around here and make sure that there's enough oil to at least get this thing going. And uh, I'm going to RTV this thing up, let it dry overnight. And then uh, after it's all torqued on and RTV'd, we're going to uh, fill it with oil tomorrow and attach it to the tractor. So um, that's about how far I am at this point. I'm just going to put around the uh, RTV and seal it up. And we'll wait till tomorrow to add the oil. So now I'm going to run the RTV seal around here. I already took a razor blade while I was waiting for my parts. I cleaned up both sides of the clamshell. They are now both completely clean, ready to go. Um, I have my uh, high temperature RTV sealant and I'm just going to run this around here, taking my time going around each hole properly. It also goes through this middle area as well. I know that because I had to scrape it off. So um, I'm going to apply that and I would recommend before you seal this thing up, double check all your parts buckets, make sure you got everything in there like those magnets and all the little pieces and stuff because there's a lot to it and you're probably not used to doing a project like this. So just double check. I put some oil, the synthetic oil. In, in this little oil pump can and what I'm doing is I'm just oiling up the parts a little bit and I'm trying desperately not to get this oil on the edges that I'm going to put the RTV sealant on. I think you know this this should help out a little bit so we're just squirting some oil in eventually everything will have oil on it but you just don't want these parts running dry so here's a look at the RTV. Doesn't really take much. One tube's definitely enough. I have two tubes. And you'll notice that I did this middle section. That's because the tank is actually split in two. You have your pump assemblies and your motor on this side over here where the filter is. And on this side, you have all your gears. And what happens if your gears fail? all the little chips won't get into your pumps and your motor if you seal that up real nice because they're actually two separate units so make sure you seal that off so that's all sealed up now we're going to place the clamshell and we're going to torque it down so I have everything in here exactly the way it should be um, just gonna put a little bit of oil right here a little extra and we're gonna attach the clamshell put a little bit of oil just on that bearing okay so I'm just trying to line this baby up Nice fit, pretty happy with that. We're going to put in our bolts and we're going to carefully torque these and hopefully not break any bolts. So at this point everything's sealed up. Uh, I'm just going to let this thing dry here overnight and tomorrow what I'm going to do is flip it over um, and attach the fan and the pulley and the top magnet and we will uh, add the oil. And if there's time, I'd like to get it on the tractor. So that's where we're at tonight. 
I know I mentioned this in the first video. Tough Torque is the company that you can get the parts from that makes the transmission. And right here is the serial number. You can see these tags that are on the transmission. If those aren't on there and you need to identify what transmission, you can look at the bottom cover and you can see this one says it's a K46 casting. Well, I think it's a K46 transmission. So that might help you out as well. So at this point, I've carefully filled it up with the synthetic oil 5w50 is what I used and uh, it's about an inch from the top it took a little more than two quarts and we're gonna put the magnet in and the plug at this point so this is the magnet assembly that sits right in there just like that and this is the plug it's gonna lock right on there like that looks good and then we put the fan on there's a, a C ring there the fan has a spline in it and it has one of these like waffly washers and uh, there's a spline gear up here and then finally we're gonna attach a snap ring I bought a new snap ring so I'm gonna get that unpackaged so I'm just trying to line up this snap ring there we go that wasn't too bad and I just need to make sure it locks into the groove there we go be careful when you pull that thing off I tried to stretch it out all the way I should have stepped it up and over the one that was on there I kind of bent it out of shape so I ended up replacing it just to make sure it would work right so that pretty much seals up the transmission and uh, the next step is going to be to mount this thing on the tractor alright guys I got everything back together um, we're gonna test this thing out and uh, we'll see if it works So um, I'm gonna disengage it and get it started and uh, I'm going to try and drive it with it disengaged and see, you're supposed to go kind of slow and just kind of see what happens, I guess, from what you're at. started up I just want to show you that it's working and I'm just driving it slow trying to work the oil in So the bottom line is that tractor runs real nice. I was uh, pleased with it. I didn't hear any weird noises. Um, you know, as soon as I tried to run it, you saw it. It, it wanted to go. If they don't 
want to run right away, what you can do is, uh, I guess, jack the tra tractor up and keep the back wheels off the ground. And you're supposed to run it on a low idle. And uh, you can engage and disengage the pump. And what that should do is, I guess, purge out some of the air. And then after that, once the wheels start rotating, then you can drive it. I was driving um, pretty slow, basically, because I didn't want to overwork any of those pumps or pistons till the oil really gets in there. I would think by now the oil would be in there, but uh, I'll probably continue to drive it around slow for about 10 minutes. And uh, then, uh, you know, I'll cut the lawn with it and see how it does on the hills. I definitely have some hills here, so... Anyhow, I'm double wide six, and that's the third part of a transmission repair of a hydro transmission, and that was a John Deere L118. I have a bunch of other small engine, zero turn tractor videos, a whole bunch of stuff on my channel, so check it out. Please subscribe, and if you have any comments, let me know. Thanks for watching, guys.